Hi, I'm Kinkas and I'm a Synth DIY guy. Welcome to your channel for music and sound design with modulars, Synth DIY and new technologies. If that kind of thing is your bag, please hit like and subscribe. Welcome to part two of my three part series on this awesome trio of modules by 4MS. Last time we built the Quad Pingable LFO. Today we're building the Quad Clock Distributor Expander or QCD Expander. And for the next video, we'll bring in the QCD itself and explore the trio in action. In 4MS's own words, the QCD Expander adds a host of features, turning the QCD into a programmatic nonlinear sequencer. Each channel gets a CV trigger delay or pulse width jack and knob, an additional output jack with three selectable modes, and attenuverters for all CV input jacks. Self-patched evolving rhythms and swing shuffle patterns are easily obtained as well as complete control over standard rhythmic patterns. The kit comes with all of the hardware and electronic components needed, as well as the panel, the PCBs, the power cable and mounting screws. There's a very good printed manual too, make sure you follow it closely. I like to start by organizing everything on my work area, then separating the resistors by value. I then populate all of the low profile components such as resistors, diodes and ferrite beads and solder them on from the top side. Next I turn the board around to trim the leads and touch up the soldering. Next up were the IC sockets and the timing crystal. I like to use the panel to keep the sockets in place as I turn the board around to solder. Make sure the notches on the sockets match the ones on the silk screen or you might plug an IC in backwards later on. Now the voltage regulator. Use some pliers to bend the regulator legs into right angles before plugging them into the board. Now the headers. Have a good look at the manual here to make sure you're installing the headers on the correct side of the boards. Again, the panel came in handy to keep everything in place prior to soldering. It's a good idea to solder just one pin for each header first. Check to make sure everything is perfectly straight. Then solder the rest of the pins. Now solder on the capacitors. Now you can break the boards apart and snap them together to make sure the headers line up. Solder on the trim pot. Now take a break and inspect your work carefully. Look out for cold solder joints, possible shorted terminals, polarities where relevant, etc. When you're ready, move on to the panel components. First let's prep the parts. You need to break off the potentiometer position tabs with your pliers and add one washer to each pot. Screw on one nut to each toggle switch as well. Now go ahead and plug in the jacks, pots and switches, but don't solder them yet. Install the LEDs, keeping track of the color. Three of these look identical. You need to refer to the card they come taped to in order to know their colors. Also make sure the polarity is correct. Long leg is positive. Now remove the protective plastic from the panel and mount it over the components. Finger tighten a few nuts, turn the panel so it's facing down and line up the LEDs to their respective holes. Also make sure there are no gaps between the panel and the jacks and that the panel is parallel to the PCB. Now you can solder one lead per component, check the alignment making sure the centered detent on the pots is actually centered. Then finish soldering. Now snap the ICs into their sockets, carefully checking their correct orientation. Go ahead and snap both boards together and you're done. Give your work another good inspection, check the power header for shorts and connect the ribbon cables. The larger one connects to the QCD while the 10 pin one goes to power. Don't mix these up. 
Now turn it on and check if everything is working as per the manual's checklist. That's it for today. Stay tuned for the next video, where we'll take a nice long dive into using this awesome trio of modules together. See you soon, and stay noisy.